we knew this weekend was going to be monstrous, monstrous, starting with that Cleveland Rio Rancho game. Now, we projected about 8,000, and it did not disappoint. 8,000, the stands were full. Kids had to line up in the grass around the stadium. It was it, The stadium was shaking before we started, which was awesome. It was just a great feeling to be a part of something like that. That's what high school football is about. Well, yeah, we get a chance to get a game like this once in a while, Adam. So these highlights are good. We can't even do it just Cleveland Stadium, Friday night. Ikeka Waters is a man amongst boys into the end zone touchdown. So Rio Rancho with the quick start. How about Gabe Ortega, a little shake to the outside, his little stop and go. He's patenting that move, and he's down the sideline, gets inside the 10-yard line, Charles. And Cleveland, not wasting the possession. Right here, you're going to have Ortega with the nice little handoff to Ben Morales. Ooh, did he get in? Yes, touchdown, but he got lit up. But now to be <laughs> all done, Rio Rancho. Easton Brewer looking for Miguel Barras in the back of the end zone. Touchdown Rams. We got a game out of One of his many targets. Well, Gabe Ortega threw a couple of picks. This one wasn't the disastrous one. Marky Alvarado with the interception. So the Rams up 14-6. Feeling comfortable. Who you got to go to? Out of the flats, Angelo Lujan. And well, when Angelo Lujan gets the rock, just watch him run. So sneaky, so <laughs> fast, and he's gone. That's six on the board for Real Rancho. And they're strolling in the Every second quarter. Week we seem to see something like this. Mr. My goodness. Ikeka. Waters, excuse me, the water is oh running. My goodness. <laughs> nice hit, Mr. Waters. And right here, Cleveland, trying to get back in it. Nice little run, Jesse Nieto. Touchdown. Off of it. Well, now we're in the fourth quarter, Charles. Cleveland having a fantastic uh -huh. second score. half. It's 24 uh -huh. 16. Don't let it roll. Oh. Inside the four, so that means Cleveland's got to go 96 yards and a two-point conversion to tie it. Well, it's always a good start when you do a little play action and you find Marcus Williams, who was big time on this drive, Charles. Nice grab, but Real Rancho, the defense that everyone been talking about all year, finally getting some pressure because it's a nice sack on Ortega. This was on third down, but the penalty. Oh, the penalty's going to... Gonna keep it going, right? Right? Run right? Sportsman like right? You can't do that. Charles. Can't do it right here and right here. Ortega capitalizing off of the penalty. Nice spin move. Looking, 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 looking. Oh, and my man Adam Cook. He's cooking. Nice catch. To the sideline. So Ortega's gonna keep it rolling. And Marcus Williams, we told you he had a big time drive, big time game. He's in. 36 seconds to go. Two point conversion ties it. Get in, Jesse Nieto. Oh, no! Shoe a shoelace tackle. It's over, right, Charles? It's over, right? Onside kick. Boop, bloop, bloop. Boop is bubbling, fumbling, stumbling. Who comes up with it? Storm you have the ball. Know it. Cleveland, baby. Here we go. Storm with the ball. 24, 22, 29 seconds. Gabe Ortega, Mr. All Everything. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Looking. He got to be looking for his big target, right? Right. Ooh. But wrong target. Interception. Game over. Real Rancho wins in a thriller. Adam, 24, 22. Clinch District and the number one you seed. You saw that clock rolling and Gabe Ortega rolling out. He had about 10, 15 yards he to run. And he likes to run. Set up a field goal. <laughs> they had a timeout. They, uh. you know, so they had some things going for them, Cleveland, but they're unable to get it. Um, Austin Reyes is, is, I believe, hit a 45-yard uh -huh. this, this year. So 10 yards would have done it, at least to give him a 40-yard opportunity. Would have left plenty of time on the clock, That's too. That's how close that game was. I'll tell you this, though. Real Rancho, Charles, they only scored a field goal in that second half. They were really limited. I mean, they had 21 points going into halftime. Cleveland changed up their game plan, were able to run a lot more successful, mm -hmm. but the Storm still can't get it done. Real Rancho looks great in the first half. They don't look so yep. good in the second half. I will say this. Coach House's team was a little bit undisciplined. Yep. Reminded me of the game against Cruces, Las Cruces, huh, yeah. right, where they kept Cruces in. There's a lot of personal fouls, a lot of penalties that you saw kept that drive alive where Cleveland – potentially goes and ties it. They don't get the two-point conversion. In the end, I mean, we're talking bad about it. I'm talking bad about a team who's undefeated and 10-0 and wins the district and got the number one overall seed. We're, I mean, we're not giving anything yeah, away. Yeah, but there. you want to keep your emotions in check. This rivalry game, uh, they're a little juiced up. They got the nice sack on Ortega, but, you know, like, as you mentioned, penalties. You got to be disciplined, especially with these games going forward. Every team they're going to play now moving forward, has the potential to beat them. These aren't these are the best of the best of what we have to offer out here. So you need to be disciplined as a team because a penalty like that almost cost them the game. Easton Brewer throws an interception, right? His next <laughs> yeah. drive with the ball, 
No problem. Three for three with the touchdown pass mm -hmm. to Angelo Lujan. So I was wondering mentally if that would kind of ruin him a little bit. No, nope, he did He did not even get close Whoa. to throwing another pick the rest of the game. You got Lujan. He was smooth. Lujan is – every week I swear we see Give a highlight that like that. Yeah. He catches it in space and he, and he creates. What a weapon to have. I mean, that's – I'm curious what – Great weapon. Coach Ryden Howard said to his team at halftime because – it was such a lopsided game at that point, mm -hmm. 21 to six. Well, coming out of the locker room, Cleveland was really able to run that football. Mm -hmm. And Jesse Nieto had a huge second half. The fullback dive with Michael Romo was big. And Real Rancher knew they were going to run it. They would load the box with a two tight end set and a fullback and just a wide out. Sometimes they would throw it to Marcus Williams, most of the time not. But still, Real Rancher had no answer. So I'm curious if Cleveland has kind of found the path. But we, Just we, like we, we saw yeah. with La Cueva uh -huh. finding the path against El Dorado is now the path against Rio Rancho. Has that been found out?